and the Lord whom ye seek. Now let's get this straight. Why did you come to this conference? Did you come to see miracles? Did you come to hear prophecy? Why did you come? Did you come to meet God? The Lord whom ye seek, and I'm seeking God. I'm not seeking miracles, as good as they are, or prophecy, I'm seeking God. You say America needs God. No, she doesn't. She need, the church needs God. If the church gets God, America will soon feel it. You know, it seems everybody's broken in America, but the church isn't broken about it. The one thing that alarms me in America and England is that there is no alarm in the church. Most of you can't handle the light you've got now. Why should you hear more? And I believe God is holding back until like that thing David wrote this morning, Lord, I can't live another day without the fire of God. You need the fire of God to pray. You need the fire of God to see visions. You need the fire of God to recognize there's no help for us. I don't want to cry as I've done so long. Like David in Psalm 80, O oh, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, Lord, don't stay there. Come down here. We need God here. Does it matter if it breaks your heart today? You're going to have million, millenniums in eternity. There'll be no sorrow there. You can't patch up your prayer life when you get to the judgment seat. You can't sacrifice when you get to the judgment seat. You can't weep when you get to the judgment seat. It's all between here and there. This period we're in now is a dressing room for eternity. That's all it is. You need God this morning. Some of you have disobeyed God all the week. And this is the day, the valley of decision. You'll go back more after today than have you done in your life unless you obey God. As I said to you more than once, I'm troubled every morning I wake up. For this simple reason, I live in a world, I live in a world that has lost its way and a church that has lost its voice. That voice has to come. You think the devil isn't a clever guy? How he tricks people, he never shows them the end. He just showed them the beginning. The church has never faced the challenges it faces now. God's going to give us a new breed of men. And every time in that prayer meeting I would say this, Lord, at the judgment seat, don't stand there in your majesty and read the record of my poor life and say, Son, I had many things to tell you, but you couldn't bear them. You were too occupied. Your ears were catching other voices, but not mine. That's why that damnable TV has to get out of the way. You're hearing more about men than you hear about God. You're getting more vision that's television than you are about the vision of the Almighty God. That's all got to change. I believe many of you are going to a new lease of life from this meeting. You'll be amazed when you wake up. You'll be amazed how the Bible speaks. You'll be amazed how the Holy Ghost speaks. You'll be amazed how all your interests in other things are withered. Do you want to disappoint God? I don't want to disappoint God. I disappoint some people, I'm sure. But one thing I want to live for, Lord, I don't want to disappoint you and I don't want you to be disappointed in me. Once you've seen that throne, these thrones don't matter. Was it in a year that King Uzziah died, got kicked off the throne, that Isaiah saw the throne of God? Who did he see on the throne? Read the 12th chapter of John. The vision he saw uh, in Isaiah 6, I saw one hand lifted up and his glory filled the temple. He saw Jesus. That's what it says in the throne. And you know, when you see Jesus like that, you'll be blinded to everything else in the world. I can read Hebrews 11 every morning and it knocks me on the floor in tears. By faith, not by organization, not by money, not by scholarship, by faith. I don't want a warm heart, I want a heart on fire. And if you don't keep fire going, it goes out. He says, still let me guard the holy fire. Then he says this awesome thing, enlarge, inflame, and fill my heart with boundless charity divine. So shall I all my strength exert and love them with a zeal like thine and turn them to a pardoning God. You see, he's not asking for a theological definition. He says, I want a fire. Listen, if our God is a consuming fire, and he is, if he takes a residence in you, you'll burn till you die. God won't die in you. 
And all he's asking you this morning is to let the walls down, let the fire in. I can't live in coldness anymore. I can't live in blindness anymore. I can't be indifferent to a dying world. Every preacher who has lost the fire, you should be on your face down here. You used to burn, but you got so busy with organizing. The fire has gone out. Come on. Say, God, consume in me everything that's unchristlike. Consume in me everything which hinders. God is brooding over us. Don't insult the Holy Ghost. That's revival. When you can't sit through the meeting, you feel you've got a burning cancer. If I don't get to the cross now, I may die before the meeting's over. He stood at the door in Revelation and said, If any man will come, I don't care how backslidden you are, how disobedient you are, there's enough fire in the Holy Ghost to burn up every bit of dross in you, every bit of unbelief. Every bit of failure, every bit of coldness, God needs a torch of holy fire in your house. He wants a fire in you to read the word of God to your family. He wants the fire of God your neighbors will know. Yes, Father, come. Come afresh, come in power. Glory to God, thank you, Father. Yes. Yes. What does it matter? Surrender everything. This is music. Oh, you say. To some, of, to some of you, I'm sure, at this moment, to some of you, this is chaos. I'll tell you, it's music in the ears of Jesus. Lord, let these men bring life where there's death. Bring freedom where there's bondage to drugs and prostitution. Dear God, many of our people go to church every Sunday. It's only a custom. They don't want God. Find some people that want God. Find some young men in Hong Kong who've been to hell and back. They're just about worn out. But Lord, you lift the beggar from the dunghill and make him a prince unto God. It's purging you and stamping you and claiming you for his own. You'll never be the same after this morning. I won't. Some of you have held out on him for five or ten years and this morning he's got right in your life. Listen, you can give Jesus a lot of joy this morning for the simple reason he's coming for a bride, he's not coming for a widow. He's not coming for the church in its lousy condition which is poor and wretched and naked and blind and don't care however rich it is. We refuse to let the devil throw the dust of time in our eyes and blind us to eternity. It's either going forward or backward after this. We refuse to go backward. It's a late hour. Lord, you either come in mercy or come in judgment. Dearly beloved, live on the Bible as you've never lived on it before. Eat it. Tell God every day, make the book live to me. Make the scriptures become alive. Let them captivate my mind and my interest. Let them become first. Let business become second. Let friendships become second. Get deep into the Word. <laughs>